They call it the American pastime, but in Louisville, baseball is also yet another reason to spend a great evening downtown. The Louisville Bats Senior Vice President Greg Galliette has been with the organization since the time they weren't downtown and they weren't even called the Bats. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Let's start with you. Tell me about your lengthy affiliation with minor league baseball. Well, let's go back to when I got out of college. I worked one year at Xerox in sales. and. It was like every day was Groundhog Day. I couldn't see myself getting up and selling memory typewriters and copiers for the rest of my life. And my family had always been big in sports. My dad played college football at Syracuse. My uncle was the play-by-play -play voice of Yale football for 37 years. And actually was one of the first anchors on ESPN Sports Center when they first came on the air. So sports has always run through our family. I had to figure out a way to get into sports. And at the time, the only thing that we really had was the Louisville Redbirds had just moved here in 1982 from Springfield, Missouri. And uh, so I uh, went out and started to make a, a nuisance of myself to the owner of the Redbirds, A. Ray Smith. And uh, I guess I wore him down. And at the time, he finally gave me an internship. And I took a massive pay cut. My family thought I was completely nuts to do what I was doing, but uh, been there ever since. All right. How is the bat season shaping up this year? Well, on the field, it's been, uh, it's like two steps forward, two steps back, uh, which is typical for a lot of AAA baseball teams because you're in constant flux with talent coming and going, particularly right now, the Cincinnati Reds have been going through a period of some injuries. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, that means they're going to be dipping into our roster and pulling players up, which they have been doing. So it makes it tough for our uh, first time manager for the bats, Delano De Shields, to really get used to an everyday lineup because there really isn't one. So mm -hmm. uh, it's been a bit of a challenge, but uh, in the stands, it's been great. We've had great crowds and uh, we're now just starting to get into the warm part of the summer. So we're looking for even better things. You mentioned players getting called up. Is that a double-edged sword? I mean, do you have the excitement of that's our guy up there with the Reds, or is it more a, oh, goodness, we just lost somebody who's really talented? Well, you do. And uh, having the association with the Cincinnati Reds, who are so close, and I think that's why they love the affiliation with the Louisville franchise, is the fact that if they call a player up, he can be in Cincinnati in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And actually, sometimes we've had it occur where a guy's gotten called up uh, in the late afternoon and actually has pinch hit or, or pitched in a ball game that night for the Reds. So they love that. Uh, but I know our fans love the fact that they can turn on their TV and say, hey, that That's guy that right guy. there, I saw him play at Louisville Slugger Field. Yeah. Um, you've done a lot of special promotions at Slugger Field. What works? I know you've done, you know, a Princess Night recently, Star Wars Night. What, what kind of things really draw people? Well, unfortunately, there's not really a, a playbook that tells you what's going to work and what doesn't. So it's almost like a laboratory. You just try out different things and keep your fingers crossed. And we've had a few things over the years that have bombed, but we're kind of known nationally for our creativity here in Louisville, particularly mm -hmm. with our promotions. So. Um, our fans seem to want more and more. So last year we did a Star Wars night that was a huge hit. Unfortunately, I heard from a lot of Star Trek people that didn't like the oh. fact we didn't do a Star Trek night. So we're going to do one of those also this year. And we're doing a superheroes night uh, where we're going to kind of have superhero appreciation night and, and really tip our cap to all the superheroes really right now who are being, I guess, uh, made uh, famous uh, across the uh, major motion picture screens with all mm -hmm. the superhero movies that are coming out. So uh, it's a lot of fun to put these things together. Louisville's been touted for recent success in downtown revitalization. What role has Slugger Field played in all of that? Well, being a native Louisvillian, I, I take a lot of pride in the fact that uh, we really were part of the catalyst for the redevelopment of downtown, and particularly the uh, east part of Main Street and also the waterfront area. We were kind of thrown in there a little bit as a guinea pig uh, with the Brindley Hardy facility, which was at the time a scrapyard. And when you drove across the Kennedy Bridge into downtown Louisville, really at that time, the first thing you saw was this dark, dingy area of downtown Louisville. And the old joke was you want to get out of downtown by 5 or 5.30 because the tumbleweeds will hit you on the way out because nobody stayed downtown to do anything. So we were kind of thrown in there as uh, an experiment to see if something would really take, especially something that's family oriented. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we started playing at 6 o'clock on Saturday nights back then for the safety factor of knowing that when games were over, it's still light out. Mm -hmm. Families with kids can walk back to their cars in daylight. We put police officers in all four directions, and we still do that to this day. How successful have the Bats been as a franchise in attracting crowds? Well, I take a lot of pride there also, Candace, in the fact that uh, over the last 16 years, as long as Louisville Slugger Field's been open, we've been one of the top 10 franchises in attendance in minor league baseball each and every year. And uh, obviously, a lot of it has to do with the beautiful facility we have to play in, but also it has a lot to do with the great fan base and, and the fact that folks in Louisville, Kentucky really are, are baseball fans and they appreciate uh, the quality venue that they get to watch baseball in. One of the people people really liked to see for the bats was Corky Miller. Exactly. He was such a character and now he's not playing ball anymore, he's coaching. Any chance that Corky might make another pass through Louisville as a coach? 
Corky right now is a roving catching instructor, which means we actually might see him at some point during the season because he roams around to the various minor league clubs of the Reds huh. and helps the young catchers uh, develop hopefully the skills that he obviously polished so well here in Louisville and also in the major leagues. But I ran into Corky in spring training and he had actually lost about 35 pounds and at the time had shaved his goatee mustache, which he's famous for off. <laughs> yeah. I almost didn't recognize, I almost walked right past him. He looks great, he's having a great time. His family lives in the Chicago area. Uh, but he still thinks of Louisville really as his second home, and he's uh, hoping to get down here at some point during the season. All right. Well, Greg, thanks for sharing all that's in the works for the bats, and we wish you much success in the future. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure being here.